Hey everybody, welcome to another post playthrough thoughts and review video. I've got something really special for you tonight and I can't wait to- Excuse me for one moment. Hello? Hi, uh, who is this? I'm a part of you. Part of me? Why would a part of me have his own Discord account? And why would part of me look so... creepy? I represent the darkest parts of yourself. Oh, is that all? Or well, you can't possibly be too bad then. I give up before I finish the seasides. <gasps> I'm the kind of person who's very motivated by sounds and music, but I'm also someone who usually makes a conscious effort to avoid soundtracks for games I haven't played. I feel it's more impactful to hear the song for the first time in the context it was meant to be heard in. I'm not invincible though, and sometimes I let a select few songs slip into my playlist. I had Celeste's Mirror Temple, Magic Mirror Mix recommended on YouTube, and I couldn't resist. That one song convinced me to play Celeste. Celeste was a game I knew entirely by reputation. People have been calling this one of the greatest games to release over the last few years. I heard it had a stellar soundtrack, top-notch but brutally difficult platforming, and a very active speedrunning scene. Platformers are something I've always enjoyed. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is my favorite Wii U game, but I'd never gotten invested in a really challenging one. Celeste just looked super appealing to me. He just wanted to prove he could beat a game known for being brutally difficult to feed his ego. Hey, are you just gonna be a jerk this entire time? Yes. So, there's really not much history here. I thought the game looked fun and sounded amazing, and I wanted to try it. I didn't enter 100% blind since I'd seen some gameplay from speedruns and other streamers, but fortunately for me, it was with so little context that my monkey brain didn't process it, so I didn't remember much at all. So. How did Celeste treat me? Are you crying? No! Celeste sets itself up very quickly. Your character, Madeline, wants to climb an entire goddamn mountain. You take in the excellent visuals, a bird informs you that Madeline has superpowers that she didn't know about, and you learn to jump, dash, and climb. You've got all you need to play this game now, but we'll touch on it all again briefly. Firstly, the visuals and presentation of Celeste. This game's art direction puts Van Gogh and Mozart to shame. The foreground visuals are clear, the sprites are super expressive despite their size, and the backgrounds are stunning. Meanwhile, Lena Rain's soundtrack, now that I could finally hear more than just a remix of one of her pieces, sincerely moved me. The soundtrack is based around piano, synth, and some seriously kick-ass percussion. There's too much here to dissect for the scope of this video, but there's some breathtaking polyphony, energy, and tranquility splashed into the soundtrack. Plus, it evolves over the course of the level to progress the story musically, as well as narratively and through gameplay. The final level, Farewell, has an entire album as its soundtrack. Now that's some instant dopamine for me. Secondly, the controls. They're very tight and responsive, and best of all, they're simple without sacrificing anything. I mentioned that you can do three things, jump, dash, and climb. That's easy and accessible, but it doesn't end there because certain combinations of moves lead to some insane movement. Wall bounces, wave dashes, extended hypers, neutral jumps, some taught by the game, others left for the player to discover. This game's movement is jank in the best possible way, and with the help of chat teaching me some tricks, soon I was speed. The jank movement is incredibly fun to play around with, but the best thing is that the game doesn't require you to use any of it to finish the game. It's very accessible with a lot of optional challenges for psychopaths like myself to torment themselves with, while little Timmy can also reach the top of the mountain. The first optional challenge is a carrot, er, uh, strawberry on a stick, dangled in front of your face. Strawberries are scattered throughout the levels, usually just out of the way enough that you have to perform an optional, more difficult platforming challenge, or explore for secrets. Not all berries are created equal. There's some in the later levels that are substantially harder than others, but they were just so fun to collect that I nabbed all of them. I want to keep talking about the optional challenges for a bit, but that dives right into spoiler territory. So you can click the timestamp below to skip these challenges in case, like me, you don't want to know what you're in for before you start the game. I knew effectively nothing about the game going into it, which led to a pretty silly situation. Whenever I start a new platformer, I do so with the intention to reach 100% completion. Those of you who know Celeste well will understand why that's a terrible idea for this particular game. Once you're finished with the game, there's the B-sides and C-sides, both various, harder versions of the levels. After that, there's the golden strawberries requiring you to execute deathless runs of levels to collect them. 
that might be a bit too much, especially when you consider Chapter 9. Farewell is the length of three chapters stitched together and hosts harder challenges than the hardest seaside. I think to date fewer than 50 people have actually done it. I'm not collecting that golden strawberry. That's not worth it. So you lied to yourself. You're not good enough for 100%. And you gave up? Yeah, absolutely. You know, as far as parts of me go, you might be the dumbest. I don't have fun grinding levels for hours on end just to earn a shiny gold strawberry. And my intention to earn 100% didn't come from the pursuit of perfection. It came from wanting to see everything a platformer offers. I'll shift my expectations as the game goes on and collect what sounds fun to grab. The A sides had strawberries and cassette tapes, which unlocked the B sides. I liked finding those secrets and completing those platforming challenges, so I grabbed them. The crystal hearts are your rewards for completing B and C sides and for solving obscure puzzles in the A sides. I liked how those puzzles, combined with the strawberries, turned later runs of A-sides into puzzles as much as platformers, as the aha moment when I finally figured it out was deeply satisfying. Plus, they unlocked more levels, so I collected those. 1A's golden winged strawberry, requiring you to complete the first level with no dashes, forces you to learn obscure and fun movement tech to collect it. There's not much pressure, so I collected it. I even got the moonberry, which you can only find by refusing to finish the hardest level in the game and taking an even more difficult hidden path. But the golden strawberries don't reveal more content, they're just a symbol of mastery, a trophy for those who put in the work to test themselves, and I did collect them in 1A and 2C, but to me, I was happy with what I'd done, and I didn't want them. That's the great part about Celeste. There's so many viable endpoints for different people. You can climb the mountain with no strawberries, you can 100% the A-sides, you can go the distance for the C-sides, or you can devote hundreds of hours to achieving 100% completion. I was wrong. Celeste is not a brutally difficult game. In fact, it's very forgiving to those who don't want the challenge. Only to those who are willing to take on the B and C sides, or the golden strawberries, does it truly show off how ruthless it can be. And yeah, actually, those levels are pretty brutal, and some of them really got to me at certain points. However, the death mechanics made even the hardest challenges feel rewarding. And I'm proud of what I accomplished. The nature of the collectibles ties in brilliantly with Celeste's story. Celeste deals with mental health in a pretty direct way, showing off the realness of depression and anxiety. The people Madeline meets on her journey all help her in different ways, and the progression of the game is directly related to Madeline's introspection. In fact, the way this game handled mental health really spoke to me. Too much, in fact. Celeste's story is so good and handles its themes so well that it legitimately made me realize I have depression, and that I've had it for years, not wanting to admit it to myself. Celeste ties every aspect of itself together brilliantly. The musical progression emphasizes the themes of the narrative whose messages relate to the gameplay through death being so fast and allowing you to try again on the exact same screen, which allows them to make harder and harder challenges which become accessible through virtue of being optional. And I really haven't explained it fully or properly, but my criticisms with the game boil down to frustrations that a single late game challenge was so precise that it wasn't fun. That's all. Celeste motivated me to keep pushing myself further and further, but the mistakes didn't matter. Only the learning did. So, after playing Celeste, are you ready to accept me for who I am? Now nah, you can go fuck yourself, actually. But on a more serious note, Celeste made me a lot more aware of you. Problems aren't solved overnight. The game doesn't expect you to clear its hardest challenges on your first try, much like it tries to teach you to be aware of your faults and work on overcoming them rather than ignoring them and suffering as a result. That's a message I sorely needed to hear, and I heard it through one of the greatest platformers. No, scratch that, one of the greatest games I've ever played. Every aspect of Celeste's design is clearly a labor of love and complements every other aspect to an incredibly high degree, and its reputation is misleading. It does get brutally difficult as it goes on, but there's something to be enjoyed here for everyone, regardless of skill level. My playthrough of Celeste felt like a genuine accomplishment, and I couldn't have done it without the help of chat. Please, you owe it to yourself to try this game. It gets my full recommendation. You can find us at twitch.tv slash quintic for more playthroughs and more self-improvement every day. Thanks for watching, everyone. And don't forget to take care of yourselves.